here. We're just going, setting up our meeting for Facebook Live. We should be able to see it now. We are live. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is working. Awesome. Hi, guys. Hello. So nice to have you here. I'm monitoring your questions and comments and everything on a different device. So I'll be kind of looking away as we have this discussion. Sure. I'm so excited to have with us here. Um, Bryce will be joining us later, but we have Shana Lucas, who is going to talk about her journey with um, myofunctional therapy and singing. And we have our resident myofunctional therapist here, Amanda Woods, in the house. So. Okay. Welcome, <laughs> so Shauna, I would love to talk to you about, well, first of all, what sort of led you on a journey to discover what it is you're going to reveal that you discovered? <laughs> let's let's <laughs> kind of unpack this package a little bit because I'm sure there's a lot of people going, I don't even know what myofunctional therapy is. We're going to get to that, but let's yeah. talk about this from being like, we're emerging from you know, some kind of like oblivion. And we re we have this realization that something is not right here, right? Is this, okay. Yeah. So I'll let you take the stage. Sure, yes, that's accurate. Um, so I have been singing for many years um, and as a young singer, it was pointed out to me that perhaps there was a little bit something wrong with my tongue. I didn't think a ton of it because I was very young at that point. Um, I had trouble with some articulation and rolling R's at that point, and that was really all that had been diagnosed. Um, so it was su suggested maybe something was wrong at that point. Um, I then quit uh, singing for quite a long time and just went in other directions in my life, um, came back to it as an adult singer, um, and at that point had yet another um, program point out to me, hey, you know, there may be something going on that you can have looked at. Um, so it was something that was kind of suggested to me, but it wasn't until for, um, I actually became a mother with, uh, and had some issues with breastfeeding that really made me start to look at tongue, tongue function. And that is what led me into really looking into my functional therapy. Okay. So what were some of the, I guess, some of your experiences with your teachers that had you look at your tongue? Like what was something that came up? So one thing that came up um, is, well, one of the major things with me is articulation and diction. Um, so it's going to be very extreme, extremely hard for me to, for instance, make the L sound um, without having to completely dismantle and break my line because my tongue would pull back. Um, articulation is a big one. And then as I looked into it further, um, and we may talk about later, I've learned that tongue is also very related to things in posture and breathing, such as rolled shoulders, um, rolled shoulders forward, um, oh, neck okay. lurching forward, and jaw and over engagement of the jaw. So those are some things that we all started looking at together. Okay, that's awesome. That's So now can you talk a little bit, because I know you work with Amanda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what what are your experiences with Amanda and, and what are some of the exercises that you've done? How has that helped you? What have you found? What kind of freedoms have you found in your voice since then? Yeah. So um, I was, I'm actually, and I just actually shared this with her yesterday during our session. I'm actually amazed at that after doing exercises, strengthening exercises for just a little bit over two weeks, I am noticing more freedom. Now, of course, that has not changed my articulation, which um, mm -hmm. we will get to some procedures and surgeries that can happen. We'll get to that. Um, but even now, and just, just us working together and doing things such as clicks, so something like, hopefully I did it right, I'm being graded. Is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that good? Um, hey. <laughs> yeah, so just doing things like that, mm -hmm. I've noticed less engagement that I could not even feel prior. Okay. So when things like my tongue might have been kind of trying to retract on mm -hmm. coloratura or retract during scales, um, it's wanting to do that less because the, it, it seems to have more freedom now after oh, okay. just doing these. Yeah, it's really exciting. Wow, that's awesome. 
So now you talked about surgery. Can you elaborate on what, what you're going to have done and what's going to change? Yes. So at, um, and as an adult singer, I'm doing this. So I mentioned that um, as a young singer, this was suggested to me that perhaps my, you know, I should have my frenulum released and the pr procedure is called a phrenectomy. Um, to an 18 year old, that didn't seem like something I was going to get involved in. Um, and then, you know, I really didn't think that I would go through with it later in life, but after what I've learned, um, and you're going to hear from Bryce hopefully later and his experience with the procedure, um, what's going to happen is um, an oral surgeon is going to release my frenulum um, surgically with a laser, I believe it's done. So it is just an outpatient procedure. Um, but what's super important and what I'm doing now is the preparation for it in myofunctional therapy. So we're getting my tongue ready to be released. And then once I have access to my tongue, <laughs> we're now going to, now I have a tongue, what do I do with it? So okay. those are kind of what we're doing. So, so basically there are dangers in getting a phrenectomy before you've done some therapy. Is that correct? Is that what you understand? I, I, do, I believe so, um, and I think Amanda would be better to speak to that. Um, perhaps some people do the procedure without the therapy, but in my case, um, I'm very, very glad that we're working together to get me ready to know what to do yeah. with a tongue when I have it. Yeah, well, I know Bryce is going to talk about this a little bit, but I, yeah. I just want to say, because I think people can hear it enough, I, having talked with you both previously, I think it's very important that anyone who maybe suspects that they do have some sort of tongue tie, don't just run out to somebody. Yeah, yeah. There's apparently lots of people that like will say that they do a phrenectomy and, but there's a whole lot of dangers in that. So you kind of have to proceed with caution a little bit more, more of a plan that might yes. just seem right. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm yes. not an expert, but this is what I've been hearing. So this will say it a few times in this discussion. Yes, absolutely. I have had um, other friends that have, diagnosed ties who have decided not to get the procedure. Um, so some people make the decision that they, they don't want to. Um, they feel that there may be some risks associated with it. Um, but I really feel like I'm in great hands. Um, and I've really made the decision that it's going to be the right thing for me and my singing. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I mean, I think when you find that some of the struggles you've been dealing with throughout the years are really not necessarily technically related yeah. to it. Like, yeah. Like restrictive. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's kind of mind blowing, right? <laughs> it is. And it's actually, um, there's a liberating piece there when you just feel like maybe you just can't, like, there's just things you just don't get, you know, you don't understand what other people are talking about. Um, in my case, I think that I just simply cannot make some of the motions necessary. Um, and that I will be able to, which I'm, I like, can't even wait to see. That's awesome. Watch yeah. out. Watch out. World. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. So exciting. Thanks. Um, okay. Well, thank you, Shauna, for sharing your journey with us. Yeah. And I know you have to go, but if you want to stick around just until you have to go in case there's a little sure. bit of back and forth, um, yes. but we'll maybe bring Amanda on now to give her presentation so that we can all understand myofunctional therapy a little bit more. <laughs> Sounds good. So let me just pull this up, make it a little bigger here on my screen and share it. I don't know if I shared the screen. Julia, did I share the screen with you? No, yeah, okay. this, this so screen is not shared. What about that? So exit back out and do that. <laughs> I think we're better. We're good now. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. So I just want to say thank you to Julia for having me speak today on this topic. It's a topic that 
not a lot of people um, are aware of. And so I love to be able to um, incite a little bit of knowledge upon a different group of people rather than just um, medical professions. Um, my name is Amanda. I'm an oral myofunctional therapist and I basically work to um, help treat patients and, and clients um, of all types that just feel that they have um, dysfunctions that are influencing the face, the tongue, the lips, the mouth, and as well as the jaws and proper airway function. The oral myofunctional disorders may affect directly or indirectly breastfeeding, facial skeletal growth, chewing, swallowing, speech, occlusion, temporomandibular joint movement, oral hygiene, stability of orthodontic treatment, facial aesthetics, musculature of the soft tissue that supports the airway. Um, my goal with this presentation is just to give your group a little bit more knowledge that can increase their awareness to recognize these dysfunctions and perhaps themselves or even their own clients um, or family members. Um, if we take an active role in diagnosing um, and recognizing these dysfunctions, we can change the quality and quantity of our lives or perhaps those that we care about. So knowledge is a beautiful thing. That application of that knowledge is powerful, right? So, you know, this field really began of oral myofunctional therapy in 1918 with an article written by an orthodontist. His name was Alfred P. Rogers. He wrote an article called The Living Orthodontic Appliances. He noted that the facial muscles, when functioning correctly, will aid in proper growth and development of the jaw. And he also suggested that corrective exercises would develop the tone and proper muscle functions that thereby influence um, proper occlusion and jaw stability. So one thing that I look at as an oral myofunctional therapist um, is proper tongue function. So um, I do this by, um, by helping people gain proper tongue function by facial exercises um, and functional modification techniques to promote better um, chewing, breathing, and swallowing skills. So what is proper tongue placement and why does it matter? So see these two slides here on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. The left-hand side um, really shows that the tip of the tongue is up on the palate. And a lot of people will, will say to me, well, my tongue is, my tongue's up there. And, and I, so then I have to go back and you know go through, is the back of your tongue, is the middle of your tongue up there? And, and this is important because in this picture, the solid blue line um, shows the, um, the frenulum. It represents the frenulum in that, that tight tissue there. The red arrow represents the pull of the frenum and the yellow vectors represent the pull of the frenum in a horizontal and vertical plane. The blue arrow is the one that will eventually affect where the posterior tongue sits. And if it sits low and back in the mouth and not on the hard palate. Um, of course, the right-hand side is a tongue in full function, completely resting on the hard palate from um, the front of the tongue to the back of the tongue, supports the airway, and also um, is perfect for articulation purposes as well. So let's just look at how it can affect someone's jaw development and orthodontic jaw stability. Um, and this is a video I hope it plays. Um, for all of you guys. Normal tongue should be frozen properly because the tongue rests in the correct position, which is in the roof of your mouth, known as the correct tongue rest. So myofunctional therapy really, let me get rid of my, myofunctional therapy really focuses on four things, nasal breathing, proper lip seal, tongue posture, and correct swallow. So nasal breathing is um, really important because mouth breathing we know elevates blood pressure, increases the risk for certain lung diseases, behavioral challenges um, that we see not only in kids, but in adults as well. 
Um, it also increases the risk for sleep-related breathing disorders, certain types of cancers, and also increases the risk for dementia. The nasal passages provide the body with something called nitric oxide. In the correct ratio of CO2 and oxygen balance also in the bloodstream if a person is a, is a nasal breather, um, you get warm and um, humidified air also when you breathe through your nose. You filter out al um, allergens and it also kills viruses. So it's actually really important um, to be a nasal breather in this day and age with COVID um, because you're actually killing um, the virus when you, when you breathe through your nose. Um, a lip seal is really important for nasal breathing. It goes hand in hand. If someone doesn't have a proper lip seal, they're going to be a mouth breather. The muscle tone of the lips also will help to stabilize the occlusion and aid in proper jaw growth and development. The tongue posture aids also in proper formation of the sinuses because we have to think about the lower um, wall of the sinus is actually the, is actually the palate. Um, so if somebody has a high vaulted palate, they're gonna have less um, area in their nasal passages and also usually a deviated septum. So when the tongue is positioned on the roof of the mouth, the jaw will grow in an optimal formation and it will be a nice flat um, growth pattern of that top upper jaw, which is important honestly for speech as well. Um, and correct swallow of course is important for digestive health, jaw growth, temporomandibular joints and orthodontic concerns. So detection of improper tongue functions. So it's estimated that 50% of Americans um, have incorrect tongue function. The um, main driver for jaw growth and development really is the tongue. The tongue during normal functions such as talking, swallowing, et cetera, puts an outward pressure on the teeth and the jaw bones. So, so some common concerns um, and causes of improper tongue function. These are the, th the key things really that I look at when I'm looking at a, a client um, and I do their first exam with them and do a comprehensive exam. I'm looking at things that might have caused the problem really to happen. Um, is, there, is there issues um, that could have happened earlier in life? And it's important to look at, um, be thoughtful and determine kind of go back in history and determine childhood, infancy even, and kind of go forward. Because um, usually there's an established pattern at some point in a person's life that's really important to rule out. So non-nutritive sucking habits or abnormal pressure habits are, are pretty important. When, when doing a comprehensive exam, like I said, I look from infancy. So for example, when a child has trained the tongue to swallow around an object, such as a thumb, a blanket, fingers, pacifier, or even prolonged sippy cup use, which prevents the tongue from elevating to the palate because an object is in the mouth. This reinforces the tongue to posture in a low part of the mouth and swallow will usually develop around the object. So it creates something called a tongue thrust swallow pattern. And you can see with this picture here on the bottom, that's a complete tongue thrust swallow pattern. The swallow should really be on the complete roof of the mouth from tip to tail, should never be in the center of the mouth. And you can see this um, child um, also has um, worn down occlusion. See how their, their occlusion towards the molars is extremely flat and also their canines because of the way that they're grinding on their teeth to get their tongue out of their airway. So this, this is a, a great depiction of soft tissue concerns and muscular concerns. So this child obviously um, has his mouth wide open. What's interesting about this though, because you look at the kid and you're like, oh, he's just in his car seat sitting upright. He has his mouth open, but he also has his head tilted and his chin lifted. That's really a, a rescue position. And, and it's something that we all need to look at. How do, you know, how are we sleeping? How, how are our kids sleeping? Um, I, do they have this chin tilt head lift thing happening when they're sleeping? Um, that's a sign that something's impacting their breathing. And it's important to look at the soft structures and make sure, explore that that may not be the, indeed the issue. And I'll go over that in another slide a little more. 
Structural concerns are another big thing. I already talked about the high vaulted pallet and, and why that is, is a formation problem with the, um, the tongue just not resting up there properly. Narrow occlusion um, also develops. So when the tongue is low in the mouth and the mouth is open, breathing um, will happen in, in an unoptimal way and um, structural problems happen from this too. So here's some pictures of tongue ties, <laughs> the elephant in the room. <laughs> um, so the, the tethered oral tissue, Shauna was talking about a little bit more. And these are obvious tongue ties. These are something that really, um, when you, you look at them, you, you notice right away, there's definitely a tie there. Um, and, and this is important to recognize in people and, and why they might be having some, some issues um, with their tongue. But looking at the tongue is, is not always the proper way to assess if truly um, a tongue tie inhibits function. Many will say that if you can lick an ice cream cone, you have a functional tongue, but they don't understand that much more needs to be a, um, assessed. How does the tongue elevate? What are the lateral movements? What does it look like? What do articulation sounds, um, what do they look like? Are they made with the middle and posterior portions of the tongue or are they made um, by simply using the jaw muscles and throat muscles to, to make these sounds happen. These compensations really over a long period of time can tax the whole system and, and um, cause a lot of temporomandibular joint problems and issues with vocal concerns. So proper tongue posture, um, you know, really when we have proper tongue posture, we're supporting the jaw um, and, and the um, jaw joint also. So this slide was taken from a lecture um, with the Breathe Institute, which um, they're amazing. Um, they have amazing lectures. Um, and I thought it was super interesting, so I wanted to share it with you. The blue and green arrow are basically showing the muscles um, and where they are attached to the bony structures, which are the styloid process, the hyoid bone, the larynx, and the sternum. So if you think about function when looking at this, it might help to understand the true impact that impaired tongue mobility might have on the function of the entire head and neck. When one muscle group is functioning incorrectly, which is the tongue, it is a big, has a big impact on the surrounding muscles. The extrinsic or outside muscles of the tongue must overcompensate or overwork basically to make up for the lost function of the tongue. Remember that the tongue has, you know, eight large muscle groups that all integrate and make it work properly. Unfortunately though, if not all of them are being utilized, um, it, it overtaxes the ones that, um, that are utilized. So no wonder why when people are tongue tied or they have low tongue posture, they often have a lot of facial pain, um, jaw pain and temporomandibular joint dysfunction. Not to mention usually a forward head posture, rounded shoulders, neck pain, um, all of that stuff. Um, a lot of people actually have pain all the way into their pelvic floor as well, which, which I will go over in the, the fascia slide, which is right here. <laughs> so it's important to take a look at fascia for a moment. So what we're looking at here really um, is a connective, intricate system um, that surrounds all of our organs, muscles, and also connects um, our dermal layers as well. But fascia really runs through our entire body and it surrounds everything. And you can see the tongue all the way up at the top and how interconnected the tongue is really to the fascial system in our body. So some people, you know, when they have a tongue tie released, um, it's tight fascia bands um, that, that actually are released. Um, and, and when they are released, a lot of people have a miraculous feeling of relief immediately, and immediately they'll see postural improvements um, from that. Um, I had one client um, recently who was always um, pigeon-toed, and after the release, the foot went straight. Um, so it was really interesting. A lot of um, parents will also say their kids are, one kid is extremely klutzy or they're always falling, things like that. Their balance and coordination isn't quite right. 
But once the tongue tie is released, the balance and coordination becomes a lot better. And you can see in this picture that really that's, we're all connected. So if one thing is functioning improperly, it really transmits to our entire body. Again, another picture of all of the muscles um, that um, support our tongue and how important it is really to have every muscle working properly in an optimal performance um, with a restriction. Really the posterior blades of the tongue usually um, are a big problem and articulation and swallow also is a big problem. So, you know, if we understand that the driving force to growth is the tongue, then it would be likely to assume that structural growth changes can occur. So let's look at the next um, video. And um, with this video, we can really see how those changes can occur. And this is just one scenario. This may not be you or someone you know, but this is a really good um, video that just describes the impact of a tight um, tongue. Oops, sorry guys. Tangent. The normal way to breathe is through your nose. As we grow and develop, certain things such as pollen, cow milk, and other variables can cause an allergic reaction, causing the lymphoid tissues known as tonsils and adenoids to become swollen. As the tonsils and adenoids become swollen, they develop into an obstruction for nasal breathing, and slowly, mouth breathing begins to be the primary intake of air into the body. In order to breathe through the mouth, the lower jaw comes down, the tongue comes off the palate and settles on the lower teeth. Nasal breathing is the correct way for air to enter the body. And during nasal breathing, the tongue rests at the palate and the pressure of the cheeks is balanced by the tongue. During mouth breathing, the pressure from the cheeks is unopposed by the tongue. The oral system becomes unbalanced and results in the deformation of the upper jaw creating a V-shaped arch as opposed to a correct U-shaped arch. This also produces an incorrect swallowing function. Upon swallowing, the tongue rests on the lateral teeth, hindering normal tooth eruption, causing a lateral tongue thrust. A constantly open mouth causes the incisors to over erupt. The result is a deformation of the lower arch known as the bicuspid drop off. The result of this deformation of the upper and lower arches is the presence of premature contacts upon closing, which shifts the lower jaw distally off of the physiologic trajectory. The narrowing of the upper arch pushes the lower jaw back. This forces the TMJ condyle to shift distally while the TMJ disc shifts forward. Upon opening, the disc can shift onto the condyle to restore the TMJ's correct position, reduction of the disc and then shifts back to an incorrect forward position upon closing. This is what causes a reciprocal flick. In addition, the muscles could be in a state of hypertonus or spasm, which can result in tension headaches. An incorrect position of the lower jaw can result in parafunctional activity of the muscles, such as flexion and grinding. Over time, grinding can result in severely worn down teeth. As a result, the teeth become even shorter, the lower jaw shifts distally even further, and the vertical of the bite decreases. In time, joint degeneration occurs. The joint becomes deformed, and the ligaments of the joint become damaged. As a result, the TMJ disc can get trapped in front of the condyle. While the click may go away, limited mouth opening will occur. A distally shifted jaw and tongue positions result in even further restriction of the airway. In order to open up the airway, the neck moves forward and the head tilts backward. This stresses the spine and fatigues the neck muscles, which results in neck, back, and shoulder pain. So I guess, you know, what to take away from this really is human beings are an intricate woven we're, we're connected to everything we do. So if one thing isn't working right, it really affects so many other things um, through our body. Um, and, you know, mouth breathing is, is really important. It impacts everything. 
Um, whoops. Um, as human beings, we'll do everything and anything to get um, our next breath in because breathing really is um, the most important life-giving function um, that we have. To breathe, we must though open our airway and um, our brain will do whatever it needs to do in order to make that happen. So compensations usually then um, exist. When um, uh, compensation patterns exist, we usually see a forward head posture, um, anteriorly rolled shoulders, and um, as in this picture here, really the, um, the face grows in a downward fashion and the chin usually is recessed in. Um, yeah, I like to think of um, Justin Bieber on the bottom and Robert Redford on the top. <laughs> like you can, you, you can see with, you know, with some people that long narrow face um, because of an, a, a breathing issue that they've had for a really long time. So compensation, right? That's, that's really what we're looking for. So sadly, 55% of our children routinely breathe through their mouths and many parents are unaware of the potential consequences that this could be having on their child's growth and development. Um, it's really a domino effect that we see um, with these patterns. So the forward um, head tilting um, position, we talked about that in that video. These are kids that have um, had their tongue ties released before the release and after, right after the release, you can see their, their clothes are the same, their hair is the same, and how much different their necks look in each, um, each picture. Um, really, their, their heads were just following their airway. So um, this is, one of the, you know, the biggest reason why I really went into this field in my passion is because um, I personally have a story with my kids um, and airway issues and lingual restrictions and the whole nine. And I'm not going to get into that with you, but um, I love this video because I really feel that it's, it's gives a great message to the public that we need to think about our children. Um, we're now stating it was just this morning, I read this actually, um, so I have to update this already. But the newest research um, on PubMed says 70% of um, children with ADHD are kids that just don't sleep well. Um, so it's important to understand the, the breathing thing is really important. So I'm gonna play this video and um, you might need your tissue, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs>
So I think, you know, take, take away from that really is, is to question, um, get a sleep study done. If, if you or someone you know um, has a history of ADHD or oppositional defiance or any sensory processing issues, um, even anxiety um, is a big one that, that is caused a lot of times by not sleeping properly. You know, make, the, make the call to ask your doctor, can I get a sleep study done? Um, the medication of choice to, that's tried and true um, for ADHD, it's the first one that they usually pres prescribe for kids, um, is, is a stimulant. Why put a kid on a stimulant who has impulse control issues unless there's something else going on? Um, is it in fact that the kid's just not sleeping properly? So, um, you know, taking a more thoughtful approach to these kids could be part of the solution to change the trajectory in their lives. We can make progress um, until we are, we can't make progress until we're open to new ideas. Teachers, medical professions, parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, search for the answers, explore new perspective and ideas, be thoughtful with our approach. Perhaps what somebody's experiencing is, is just something that they've suffered with their whole lives and they think that it's just normal. So let's look at tongue ties again. So tongue tie is a liberation of the tongue or lip from an anatomical restriction um, that prevents proper function. So the surgery is called a phrenectomy or a frenuloplasty. It's a relatively minor surgical procedure that's performed to loosen um, that overly tight, poorly positioned bands of tissue um, that are connected um, in, an, in, an, in an inoptimal way that prevents the tongue from working correctly with speech, chewing, swallowing, and other aspects of oral function. So some of, you know, tongue ties are really easy to see. They're, they're low um, hanging fruit. <laughs> you can self-diagnose them such as the severe tongue tie, um, even the moderate tongue tie, you can see how, how bound down and really um, tight that tissue is. Um, others though require assistance of an expert provider. The diagnosis of a tongue tie is not about the appearance of the tongue, but rather the function of the tongue. I think that's something that's really important to take away from this. A comprehensive exam with a myofunctional um, evaluation is great because it gathers all of the information the signs, the symptoms, things that might have happened in the past, and brings everything together into a complete picture. And when you have that complete picture, you can really create the perfect diagnosis um, and then um, attack the issues of concern from there. And sometimes just getting a tongue tie is not necessarily the first step. Um, perhaps someone is too narrow in the palate area and they can't lift and elevate their tongue properly up there once the release is done. And then they just have a released tongue that has nowhere to go in the mouth. So, so it's really important that you do work with a specialist who understands um, tongue ties and how to treat them and how to, um, to go through the process and get you a team that'll work um, to, to serve all of your needs. So these are symptoms of oral myofunctional disorders. Again, um, I'm just going to touch on sleep because those are, those are the first things on my list. Um, I work with a lot of people that have sleep disordered breathing concerns. And a lot of people think that sleep apnea is a sleep disordered breathing concern. Um, and it is, but there's other breathing concerns also that affect sleep. And in women, we present completely different uh, many times than men with sleep um, disordered breathing. It's usually a very silent thing that women experience and it usually happens um, at a, in, in around their 40s. Um, a lot of women think that it's just related to their age and their hormonal status and they don't really take an active role in, in asking more questions to their physicians. But um, you, you wanna ask more questions. Um, speech is, or uh, sleep is really important, the quantity as well as the quality of speech. Um, and if you or your loved one has a problem, there's a test that you can take right online. It's called an Epworth test, E-P-W-O-R-T-H, Epworth test. You can download it, take it yourself. 
and it'll tell you if you're a candidate for sleep disorder breathing condition. We have a huge problem with sleep apnea in this country. It's estimated that 80% of people um, are undiagnosed and it takes 16 to 18 years off a person's life, um, undiagnosed sleep disordered breathing, not to mention the health problems that are associated with it. So oral myofunctional therapy can eliminate snoring. It can eliminate apneic events. Studies show that 62% of children and 50% uh, that it, studies show that myofunctional therapy has a 60% decrease in apneic events in children and 50% less in adults. Um, and that really without exercising the muscles that support the airway and addressing the proper tongue posture and nasal obstruction concerns, um, sleep apnea can become much less severe or even um, eliminated. So. Multidisciplinary approach. I love this. I'm just one person. Um, I love to be able to refer to anyone that needs to be referred to anyone else in the community, um, such as airway orthodontists and specialists or specialties um, such as ENTs and and um, body work people, all kinds of stuff. I really feel that it takes a whole community of people to address everybody's problems most of the time. And um, I'm Amanda, this is my email address, be my oh well, my phone number, I'm here in the United States and um, I have over 20 years in the dental field. I do all of my work through telemedicine and um, I use a lot of technology um, with what I do and, and it's been working great and really great through COVID. I haven't had much of a lull here because <laughs> uh, I don't have an open practice space. So anyways, if you have any questions, get a hold of me. I do free 30 minute consults with anyone who has more questions also. Um, you can go onto my website and um, request a free 30 minute consult or um, email me. My website is bemyowell.com. Together, we can exchange sickness for vitality, energy, and health. It's really nice to see everybody today. All right, Julia. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, can we can we stop the share the screen share? For yeah, a I'm gonna pull it off. Okay, cool. Give me a second. Awesome. I'm gonna have to adjust the slide down. Stop. There we go. <laughs> cool. Hi, guys. <laughs> so as I'm watching that, I'm like, oh my God, I had like every problem and they're probably oh. <laughs> all related to my tongue. I'm like, I didn't sleep well last night. Probably my tongue, probably like can't breathe. Probably my tongue. Like <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people felt that as they were watching that presentation as well. <laughs> it, it resonates to a lot of people, um, unfortunately, um, but I, you know, it, there's great books out there. Um, Dr. Stephen Lynn talks a lot about this in his book. It's called The Dental Diet. Mm -hmm. But there's a huge phenomenon that since the Industrial Revolution, we've really shrunk. Our our, our, our jaws have shrunk. Everything mm -hmm. shrunk. So really, sleep apnea wasn't a concern for a very long period of time. If you look back in anthropology, our jaws were huge. We fit all 32 teeth in our mouth. Mm -hmm. Now we can't fit even the you know, just the teeth without the wisdom teeth, people mm -hmm. still have to get teeth out in order to fit everything in, unless you have the expansion and you, you know, you get yeah. So yeah, it, we're, we've shrunk, unfortunately, but what has happened to our airways, they've shrunk right along with us too. Yeah. Yeah, we're not cool. chewing. <laughs> we're not chewing. So, yeah, so before I have to take off, um, yes. I, I, I can uh, help out a little bit about you know, as you're watching that, right, we're talking about like serious life and death things. Uh, but if you think about that, those things as a singer, a singer who has trouble breathing, well, <laughs> we might have a bit of an issue in our hands, right? Mm -hmm. So a, a singer who is not aligned, right? Yeah. So their neck and their shoulder, as mm -hmm. you can see kind of for, for me, is gonna roll forward. Those mm -hmm. things make everyday thing singing and lessons very challenging. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, singers can understand, of course, we want ears over shoulders and we want to be aligned, but our bodies, if, if we have this type of thing, our bodies are not cooperating. So we're really working extra hard and against the grain. 
So mm -hmm. that's some of my takeaways. Um, and I just, I'm so excited to be able to see what happens when I get this released. And if my, <laughs> if my uh, things happen quickly, that would be great. Um, but I do know from Bryce's experience that there's a lot of work after the release that you have to do as well, kind of to train. But mm -hmm. I think uh, Mandy, thanks so much for sharing that presentation yeah. um and really educating on kind of the seriousness and the the importance of proper tongue function mm -hmm. um and as we know tongue's pretty important to singing <laughs> so <laughs> does a lot for us um so i'm really grateful to be on my journey with amanda mm -hmm. that's thank awesome you. Shana, thank you i feel that you guys have taught me a lot too because you you probably are the hardest working tongue people out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just yeah, like, when you guys start talking, I'm like, yeah. wow, they know so much, like even more than I do on the articulation piece of things. And that's where I was excited to hear Bryce's um, point of view as well. And I'm so sorry he's not here, but um, wow. well, you know what? We'll just have to get him back another we're time. gonna have to get him back yeah he said he's sending us his presentation before just so you guys know what's going on bryce's internet went out and mm -hmm. the, his cell data unfortunately isn't fast enough it doesn't support zoom so he couldn't join us right now he, he's been trying he's been on the phone with the internet provider but can't seem to come on here in time so he's gonna leave his presentation and we have to get him back because he's got some really that's yeah. good for you guys You'll just do another part, presentation. part a and part b yeah a Amen. exactly yeah, yeah. Bryce, bryce's yeah. experience is the one that inspired me to go ahead and go through with the surgery so um it, it is really awesome because as singers we don't have a ton of resources out there of people who've actually spoken about this yeah. um it, it's kind of shocking how little we have talked about this or know people who've had it so yeah absolutely yeah. Well, you know, no, you know, just so like everybody knows kind of how we all got linked up too. Shauna posted something on the Empowered Singers group and it was about, it was about this, your journey. And you posted something about myofunctional therapy and I had been on my own personal journey. I had no idea myofunctional therapy existed, but I was on my own personal journey with my tongue and how like a drastic change in how I'm holding my tongue on an everyday basis has really like changed actually like everything, including my posture, my head, neck position, like all of that. Um, and so then I saw your post and I'm like, oh my God, this is a thing. Like I have to talk to you about this. And so that she, you, Shauna, you hooked me up with Amanda and then also with Bryce. So that's how we are all connected in this. And Bryce's journey actually is on the Breathe Institute website um, with um, Dr. Zurish Zaghi. Um, he has, um, he speaks um, on that website. So I don't know exactly where it is, but it's under testimonials maybe. Yeah, he's, he linked it. So I'll, I'll put it in the comments so people can find yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's really interesting. And, and he's, um, he's and his journey has been incredible. I'm excited for him and his where he's going in life. Yeah. So yeah. Amanda, before I let you go, um, I have mm -hmm. a couple of questions since Bryce isn't joining us and Shauna hopped off. Yeah. Um, so we were talking a little bit um, before this and I said, you know, because we had read about the posterior tongue tie, the regular tongue tie. What is, what is the difference between those two? Because yeah, so we have to have classifications, right? For insurance, we have to have classifications for everything. So there's four basic classifications of tongue tie. Um, and it, if you look um, um, online, you can find them um, under Cutlow classification of tongue tie, K-U-T-L-O, Cutlow. Um, and, and he has, has a good, like great pictures of the tongue tie, but yeah, there's the, you know, the tongue that's tied all the way to the tip, you know, heart shape, you can really tell that one, people just aren't functioning well with it at all. And if they make it past infancy, which a lot of people do, unfortunately, with that type of tongue tie, they usually have a, a ton of compounding issues in life. Although I have two little kids recently that both have those tongue ties and they had no issues. It was so interesting. 
But once they had the tongue tie released, wow, it was like a game changer for them. Because like I said, they, you really don't know that there's a dysfunction mm -hmm. um, sometimes until somebody points it out to you. And that's exactly what happened to them and their parents. But they made it like, you know, both of those kids were both 10 years old and they finally had theirs released. Um, and then there's, you know, the ones that are a little bit further back, you can see an Eiffel Tower type tie. So when you do suction and hold, you can this see is that, band, that band of tissue, theirs has like, uh, goes into, yeah, you have one. <laughs> theirs goes into the, the ramus um, down here, the jawbone itself, and then kind uh -huh. of pulls back from there. And you'll uh -huh. see, it almost looks like an Eiffel Tower where you have the base go out and then it kind of goes in and then the top goes out here. Okay. So, so that's like usually a grade um, two to three. Again, it depends upon the restriction of the tongue. We do that with a measuring tool. Okay. Um, how we do that is a ROM measuring tool. Okay. And we usually do um, three different measurements with this. We'll do a full open okay. measurement and then we'll do tongue on the spot. And then we take a, a, um, a, a ratio of those two numbers and that gives us um, our, it's called a TTMR. But anyways, it's, it's, it's a range of motion number that we get from that. And then the other one is the suction and hold. Mm -hmm. Again, another measurement. So those three measurements we take and that really kind of gives us a breakdown of what your number is and where your classification is. And then again, we're looking at your speech, you know, what's going on? Are you holding your neck forward? I, you know, I've had two kids that are losing me where I, where I've said, okay, to their parents, I'm not sure. Like they, I think they have a posterior tongue tie, but they have a long tongue. They have a lot of function with it. I think we should start therapy and then see where it goes. And sure enough, when we got to swallow, that's where we stopped in therapy because I knew right then and there that they couldn't get their tongue up their palate to get full function to swallow. Okay, so this is where I still don't understand and it might be my ignorance. Yeah, so no, it's not you, ignorant. So you just described all of these tongue ties, the four different mm -hmm. types, which mm -hmm. in my mind, we would be able to see all those four types. Well, well, the fourth type of course is no tongue tie at all. So that's somebody who has full range of motion, like me, I mean, I, I used to have a tongue tie, now I have complete range of motion. You can see, I can open. Yeah, right. But okay, I, I guess I'm, so I'm I do about this, I function with everything with full maximum opening. Okay, but opening. but the one that you can't see, what what is this one that we cannot see? Is this the posterior tongue tie? Correct. So and even with an anterior tongue tie, to be quite honest with you, even when you can see the tongue tie and it comes out and it goes all the way to the tip of the tongue and it looks like a heart shape, there's usually always a posterior component to it. Okay. So you can remove, we call it a mat. Like if you think about a sail, right? You, okay. you have your sail and then you have yeah. your mat behind the sail. Mm -hmm. So usually if there's a mask out front that you can see, there's always that sail that's underneath the tissue in the back. Okay. So some people like Shauna, she may be one of them, may need a two-step tongue tie release where we okay. release, first of all, the masked part of it, part that you can see. Mm -hmm and let that heal and then we go back and we release the inside part of it. Oh, so that inside part would be the posterior tongue tie, is that correct? That's the hidden, that's the hidden restriction. Correct. So guys, if you're watching this, do you understand why it's important that you want a specialist, like somebody very, very knowledgeable in this? I just want to say that again. So Public service you announcement. You totally want that because I've seen some, I mean, I've seen some bad stuff. Um, so, you know, and, um, yeah, you need, you need a, you need somebody to look at it who knows what they're looking at. So I, one of the biggest things too, that not everybody realizes, right. They go to their doctor and they're like, I think I have a tongue tie. And their doctor says, well, can you lick an ice cream cone? Well, yeah, I can lick an ice cream cone. Well, then you're fine. It doesn't impact anything. Can you speak? Okay. Well, yeah, I have a little lisp and I mumble sometimes and I get real tired. Yeah. But you can speak. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Then you're fine. And that's about the end of things, right? Mm -hmm. what, we, what not a lot of people realize is that doctors um, in medical school and dentists take one hour of lecture on the tongue. 
Oh, so what I just <laughs> described in this lecture is really only a, a tip of the iceberg from what I look at. Um, because I, I really, I really tried hard to condense it all for you. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff that I that I go through. Um, but I, it's been years of, of training in order to get me to this point. And I'm a dental hygienist. I've been a practicing dental hygienist for 20 plus years. And um, I've, I've always kept up with education. I've always gone back to school. I'm, I do, you know, 40 plus hours, like just when I did my, when I did dental hygiene of continuing education a year, um, I don't even go to the courses right here in Vermont because I'm so paid for it. So I, I've always searched, I've always searched for really knowledgeable profession, professional um, dentists also to work with because I, I'm interested in new, new and developing things. This was something that was mind blowing when, when I learned about it for my particular kids and, and what happened with me, with um, with my child growing and ADHD and all this stuff. But um, it was mind blowing that I didn't know this, <laughs> you know? And so, so it was something I had to learn on my own. And um, the dentist that I work with now, he's an airway focused dentist. Um, I taught him a lot of what I know. And now he, um, is now air, an airway focused dentist because he went like nuts learning about it. And he took Dr. Um, Dr. Surush Sagi's um, class and he's become really proficient with tongue tie releases and stuff. But um, anyways, it, it's just interesting because they don't. I mean, he went to, a, you know, San Francisco to college. I mean, he went to a fantastic college, yeah. but he didn't know. Um, right. He didn't know. <laughs> And uh, we'll spell it out for you because Amanda did tell me this before. Um, if you don't get somebody very, like, who knows what they're doing, somebody had even lost nerve feeling in their tongue. So yeah. you don't want to rush into this. This is not no. something as a singer that you want to just say, yeah, let me get my tongue tied. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You really want somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And so and that's where a myofunctional therapist can really help to guide you in that right. path. And we have a really strong network, like you guys do. Mm -hmm. of knowledgeable people um, who, who we only work with, preferred providers, we call them. Right. And, and would you say, Amanda, that like a lot of singers could maybe get by with myofunctional therapy with a mild tongue tie and that that might be enough to really release some of the tensions that they're feeling in their voice? I wouldn't say that we couldn't try, you know, we can try and it at least we'll engage a lot of the muscles and lift and elevate the posterior blades of the tongue as much as we can. You know, are we going to be able to accomplish all four goals of myofunctional therapy? I don't know, but you won't know unless you start down the path, right? Like my, like I said, with those other two kids that I worked with, um, we got to a certain point where we realized we weren't going to progress to the swallowing phase of thing properly things properly because I couldn't get the posterior um, portion of their tongue to suction mm. to their palate in order okay. to, to, you know, to make swallowing happen. Okay. So yeah. basically if you guys are watching this and you suspect you've got tongue issues, you, so you suspect you might have a tongue tie, which I found out today, although I kind of knew this anyways, I have a slight <laughs> tongue tie. Okay. So what are you going to do? Well, I think you guys should book a consultation with Amanda. That's the first step. Start down the journey. Don't rush off to your nearest, what, do dentists do this kind of work? Do dentists do a phrenectomy? Yeah, dentists yeah. do them, but not, there's a lot of lasers out there. So a lot of times the dentist will think that, oh yeah, I can do that, I got a laser, and they'll pull off that, you know, blow off the dust on the laser, and they'll start <laughs> it up, and um, that's not the guy you want. You want the guy who says, you know what, I think you need to go and see a myofunctional therapist first and do a couple sessions with them in order to start to train your tongue to be to activate all the muscles to it so mm -hmm. that it can, when you have the release, it can lift and elevate. That's awesome. Okay, so you guys heard, heard us loud and clear. The tongue is so important to the whole health and functioning of yourself as a human not only your functioning voice. So really you want to pay a lot of attention to what this muscle is doing in your body. And if it's something that you suspect could be optimized or could be working a little bit better, book your consult.
Now, we're going to put Amanda's information down here. So, um, I'm already signed up for mine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, this is, this is, I think, really groundbreaking in our industry. So, this is exciting. Yeah. We're going to have Bryce on at a separate occasion because, unfortunately, his internet just is not working today. But that's good. So, we'll have another session of this. One more thing, too, I, I yeah. do want want to say is that the other thing that myofunctional therapy um, does before a tongue tie, which is really important. And, and I did not touch on this at all. And I was kind of hoping Bryce would a little bit, and then we we're going to go back and forth on it, mm -hmm. but the nerves and the blood vessels underneath the tongue, when you do myofunctional therapy, um, it actually makes the blood vessels and nerves retreat back so that when the doctor does the tongue tie release, you won't have to go through all of your blood vessels and nerves. Whoa. You'll be able to see the fascia very clearly, and that's what he's going to release. So I think oh. like that's the important part about myofunctional therapy, doing it okay. before, especially for you guys, because you don't want your nerves and your blood vessels. You don't want anybody near those. So that's what myofunctional therapy is for. It's the, the exercises that you need before the release is done to help so that the release is a success. Yes. Okay. That is very important. Um, so does anybody have any questions for Amanda? I'm, I'm keeping tabs right here on my Zoom. We're going to have a little bit of a delay, Amanda, because of okay. the feed, but... Um, I hope I can answer them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll just wait for anybody who has some questions for us but I, I think that this is like really something that is gonna need we're gonna need to do some kind of like collaborative vocal myofunctional study like before and afters on singers it would be awesome um i don't yeah. know of any um no me neither yeah and i'd love for um shauna to tr to chart like to kind of blog her journey Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. Let me just check here. I don't know if we have any questions. Anybody? Oh, would like to share this video with colleagues. Yeah, I'll make it shareable. I'll be posting it on my page later so you can share it from my page. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you for the info. Okay. Anybody questions, comments? I think there's, yeah. No, uh, no questions. Everyone's just saying thank you. So, um, I think well, I get a lot of knowledge today. Everybody's brains are like, uh, <laughs> I know. I like I told you. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't sleep well last night. It's my damn tongue. <laughs> That's it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to, uh, Amanda, if you don't mind staying with me for just a minute, I'm going to sure. cut our live feed. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everyone. Live. And again, thank you, Amanda, for coming here. You're welcome. Talking with us.